So lichen amyloidosis um, is a disease that has uh, changed quite a bit over the past um, uh, couple decades in terms of trying to understand uh, not only the biology, but also in developing new therapies. Most of the treatments for amyloid has been based on what has been successful in myeloma. Uh, currently, the most common initial therapy that we use for myeloma uh, is a combination of bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone. There is an ongoing trial, which we hope to hear the results of later this year, that is looking at adding deratumumab to bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone to see that if that would improve the outcomes. One of the challenges with amyloid has been the very early mortality in these uh, patients, partly because of the advanced organ dysfunction that uh, limits the amount of therapy that we can give, but also um, uh, which in turn is a consequence of delayed diagnosis in many of these patients. So uh, the goal in, um, uh, in the treatment of amyloidosis has always been that we use plasma cell directed therapies to try and get rid of those myeloma cells, to get rid of the plasma cells that are making the amyloidogenic light chains. Uh, the way that we monitor for uh, success in that area is by measuring the serum-free light chains while patients are getting treatment. And that is what we use for determining what we call the hematologic response. Now, the hematologic response, um, while um, it, it gives you an early readout of the treatments working, um, does not really reflect improvement in patient symptom status because of any organ function improvement, which often may take months to sometimes even over a year to, to appear. So um, our ultimate goal is to improve the organ function so that patients feel better and the risk of um, dying from complications of this disease is minimized. Um, so we have a dilemma where we in institute therapy and look at the hematologic response to decide if the treatment's working. And the reason why we do that is because we have studies showing that if you can get a deep hematologic response, your organs are likely to improve. However, this is not a very strict relationship in that some patients might get um, not very deep responses hematologically, but still get a good organ response, and vice versa. Some patients might get a deep hematologic response and their organs still might not improve. We are still continuing to study the underlying biology of these discrepancies, but meanwhile, one of the uh, problems in terms of having this discrepant heme and organ response is trying to decide early on whether uh, a treatment is truly working. And this is particularly challenging when we are thinking about clinical trials where we want to try and get an early readout. So we developed the composite organ and heme response with the goal of trying to see if we can integrate the hematologic and organ response data to better delineate which patients are going to do better. So we essentially looked at the heme response and the organ response at three months and at six months and trying to integrate, uh, giving them different um, weights in terms of the uh, degree of response and combining them to come up with a composite score. What it told us is that if you have a composite score that is beyond a particular cutoff, um, where, which you might have reached either because of a, you know, organ response, so you could have maybe not the best heme response, but you have also have an organ response, which could get you there versus you could have a very deep heme response and not yet have an organ response, but still could get you there. So by using that kind of cutoff, we hope that we have a system that can be implemented in clinical trials as an early readout um, of clinical trial efficacy. Um, we showed in this trial or the study that these short-term surrogate composite heme and organ response level can be can be a good surrogate for long-term outcomes like overall survival. So clearly, the um, uh, you know the, what is most important in my, in amyloid is the depth of response. Um, but we also want to this particular model allows us to integrate the two. Now, having said that, you know, the hematologic response, we know that in myeloma, we are moving beyond protein assessment and we want to see what the bone marrow looks like by looking at minimal residual disease negativity. So in amyloidosis too, that we looked at um, MRD negativity using flow cytometry and showed that if patients are able to get to an MRD negative state, these patients do much better in terms of their long-term outcomes compared to just getting a uh, complete response hematologically. So this is, will also be an additional important um, uh, endpoint for future clinical trials.